Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be isolating elemental silicon. Now my source of silicon is silicon dioxide, which is sand. And the reaction is an aluminothermic reaction, which is a thermite type reaction. So, in theory I would just combine silicon dioxide and aluminum to produce aluminum oxide and silicon. However, that reaction doesn't sustain very well because it needs a lot of heat. So some extra aluminum is added and some sulfur is added. And a side reaction takes place between the two, producing aluminum sulfide. That reaction is really hot, and it produces enough heat to keep the silicon reacting with the aluminum. So the ratio is 12 units of sulfur, combines with 9 units of silicon dioxide, which combines with 10 units of aluminum by weight. So as you can see, my uh, sand is really fine. And as to how I did that, I started with sand that looked like this here. I don't know how well you can see, but it just looks like normal beach sand. And it's exactly what it is. And to grind it up, I used a ball mill. So a ball mill, in design, looks a lot like a rock tumbler. What it is, is it's a... a ...container. And this container contains some grinding media, which would either be lead or steel balls, depending on what you're grinding. And you... I'll show you the inside here. You put a cap on this, and you set it on your base unit here that has a motor hooked up to it, and uh, spins this rod. And that spins the whole unit. And in the process of spinning, grinds up your product. So I let the sand run for about 18 hours, and I produced this nice fine sand powder. Anyway, I'm going to be mixing that with the appropriate amount of sulfur and aluminum, and then showing you me setting it off. Alright, I mixed 54 grams of really fine sand powder from the mill with 72 grams of sulfur and 60 grams of aluminum. The ratio is 9 parts sand to 12 parts sulfur to 10 parts aluminum. Anyway, I'm going to be lighting this mixture with some flash powder on top with a fuse, and um, two reactions are going to go on. First of all, the aluminum and the silicon dioxide will react to form silicon and aluminum oxide, and the side reaction of aluminum sulfur is going to happen. Uh, because the sulfur is going to be so hot, we're going to have some uh, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide produced, which is really, really bad. It's all bad. So just uh, do this outside with really good ventilation with a slight breeze, and uh, yeah, so let's watch it go off. Okay, you can see my setup here. It's all in a little Dixie cup, some flash powder on top, and an exceptionally long fuse. So I'll get that lit. And um, to get back, I want to make sure you're downwind from the products. Because, sorry, I want to make sure you're upwind from the products because uh, you don't want to inhale any of the gaseous products of sulfur. I buried it a bit so you can see the smoke coming out of the hole. And any minute now, a light. This is flash powder. And there goes the thermite. I don't know how well it picks up on camera, but we can see a uh, blue tint to the flame due to the presence of the sulfur there. And yeah, it's getting really energetic. Wow. You can see the silicon product bubbling down there. And it's still reacting. Awesome. All right, I'm going to let this cool and then uh, take this back to my lab. Okay, uh, back in my lab, I've got the products from my reaction that I kind of crushed up into a few smaller pieces. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I can see some some stuff in there that looks like some unreacted aluminum, and uh, maybe I can see some silicon there. It looks pretty crystalline. Anyway, I'm going to add this to a larger beaker, and... First I'm going to react it with some water, which might react some aluminum sulfide that's been produced, I'm not sure. And then if no reaction is observed there, then I'll uh, add some hydrochloric acid, 
to dissolve away um, basically everything but the silicon. So anyway, I will show you the reactions once I start them. After adding some water, a reaction to deserve that's pretty uh, intense. We got some bubbling and the solutions turning colors. Uh, there's a chance that hydrogen sulfide is being produced, and uh, you should really be working in a very ventilated area and uh, keep your distance. Have a respirator on hand in case things get out of control because hydrogen sulfide is sometimes said to be more toxic than hydrogen cyanide. So, anyway, I'm just going to keep let this reaction go. As you can see from me, the reaction got pretty out of hand, so be really careful when doing this. Uh, most of this vapor is steam, but I had to put on a respirator so my voice might sound a little weird from that. Anyway, yeah, be very careful when uh, dissolving away your product because hydrogen sulfide generation is quite likely. Okay, so this is the product of uh, its reaction with water. Uh, we can see a uh, really thick precipitate of aluminum oxide or hydroxide and um, uh, my next step is going to be to decant this and then wash the precipitate with hydrochloric acid to dissolve away any aluminum compounds and should leave me with pretty pure silicon. Okay I started dissolving everything and um, it was pretty clear that I would need a ton of HCl to get through all the aluminum oxides. So I stirred everything up and um, was able to decant some uh, like a suspension of aluminum hydroxide and oxide and because the silicon kind of settled to the bottom so that's what I've got here is I've got mostly silicon and um, some other impurities sitting in HCl you know, this way I can use the HCl better and not have to real worry about that so um, so far it doesn't look like I have a whole lot here it doesn't look like I got too good of a yield but I'm gonna you know I'm not, I don't want to say anything too quick I'm gonna do some calculations and find out how good of a yield I got so Anyway, I'll show you once it stopped bubbling and I can filter out some pretty pure silicon. Alright, here is uh, the silicon that I just filtered after it stopped bubbling in HCl. I have yet to calculate a percent yield, um, but when I do, I will put that in the description. So, you can see trunks here, and um, a lot of this is just kind of a powder. So. On the larger chunks, I can see, uh, I don't know how it picks up on camera, but it's really crystalline and um, just like the pictures of silicon look. So that's good. Um, sources of loss of yield could have been when I was pouring off the aluminum oxides. I think there was a lot of uh, really fine silicon in the solutions, so I could have lost some there. Um, I am also calculating yield as um, sand being pure silicon dioxide, and sand is not 100% pure silicon dioxide, but anyway, I don't think that's a um, big enough error to really matter. So, yeah, I'm going to let this dry and be crushing it up uh, for use in a future video, hopefully. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Anyway, uh, thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, let me know.